I want to welcome everyone into our weekly webinar. Um, Angelo Darren, your driverpreneur with Ride Local. Next to me today is Dawn. She's going to be part of the show today. And I'd like to welcome Dawn. Dawn, welcome to the show. Thank you. And it's nice to see you here and uh, see that we've uh, kind of came back this week. Uh, we're like one day off and the reason why we are kind of like one day off from it is because we had the problem uh, of taping it but uh, because we love technology the only trouble with technology sometimes burns you and it did burn us we taped it we had it all taped out and after we were done guess what happened we lost it so and we did find a clip of it but it wasn't a very big clip but we did find a clip in order you know in order to come back but anyhow we're back here we want to kind of come back this week and tell you, give you a recap from uh, what's happened over the previous week and uh, and then go from there. Uh, Don, do you want to kind of chime in here, let people know who you are, uh, you know, what you're all about and uh, how are you associated with Google? Okay. Um, yeah, my name is Don Keller and I am a co-owner of Bright Local. And what I do is I try to get some of the uh, drivers on board so we can get on the road as fast as possible right <clears throat> and then of course you know i drive as well just to make sure that every you know our customers are all happy sure amongst the, among other things right right and are they i mean i mean uh, uh, what's give give us a kind of a recap over last week and uh I mean, I, I noticed like the difference between the week. I've had like uh, maybe my, my numbers have gone up in double digits trying to build a platform with Ride Local. Uh, uh, a lot of people don't know or, or haven't never maybe uh, kind of tuned into our weekly webinars and give you a recap on it. Uh, really, our company is about being lower fares and uh, paying drivers more money when they're out there uh, grinding in order to pick up riders and give them the service in the Grand Rapids area. Now, we are branching out to other areas. We're in Grand Rapids and Yuma, Arizona right now. Uh, our hopes is to, uh, is uh, we, we have opened up in Detroit area, but we'll get into that a little bit later in the show uh, for tonight. But just to let you know that uh, our company was started here in little old Grand Rapids, uh, mainly because of some of the problems that associated in the industry. And that's really got us to build this type of platform. Uh, we really built the platform based on uh, what's better for a driver and what's better for a rider. So what we did is we went out and we uh, found a lot of different ride share companies out there. And obviously the two big ones everybody is familiar with is Uber and Lyft. We did that. We found out uh, pretty much uh what riders didn't like about it what drivers didn't like about it and uh pulling everything together then we decided to all pull the drivers together so this is kind of a recap over months and, and in some cases uh, we're looking a little bit over a year but we brought the drivers in that are on the road that are experiencing the low pay or the, the low uh, or the high percentage ubers taken out of their pay on their fares and sending it back to california and that money is going back into california so we looked at that and we wanted to bring a platform that's not only fair for the driver, but for it because you make the driver happy, obviously the rider's going to be happy, but also build a platform that's not only based on, you know, providing rides from A to B, but providing a service that's second to none when it comes to rides uh, and touching people's lives with it. And so that's really what we're all about. We're about taking our and bringing the ride local you know, enrich the residents in the community by uh, paying the drivers more and also by having lower fares for people in order for them to get back and forth. The reason why it's so, um, so anyhow, that's what we're all about and that's really what we do. The next thing we want to get into is a little bit about what's going on to the news, Don. Maybe you can uh, spearhead that about some of the things that we've been hearing. Oh, sure, sure. Um, I heard that Uber can't get into Better Business Bureau in Grand Rapids. Um, I shouldn't say Uber, but let's just say one of them. Uh, another thing is their, their stock is dropping again, 
And I, I personally, I don't think they're going to last that much longer with the ride share. They might do things with the avocado. Yeah, but even better. if even if they even if they got out, we still got competition. Exactly. Yep. So yep. really, yep. it doesn't matter about that. The sad thing about it is what they're doing is taking advantage of people uh, yes. on both levels, and uh, and I think riders experience it when they get price increasing through higher demands like surging or prime times. Uh, at times there's riders that do that. I've even talked to riders that just was done and we're going to use them again because he got bit or stunned by that increased price. So that's one side of it. The other is on the driver's side of it. There's a, literally a lot of drivers that put a lot of hours in and in some cases more hours than really they, they, they should in order to try to at least pay the rent and pay the bills. And really they're the ones who have a lot of costs associated to all of it. So what we did, built that platform to enable the driver to, to get 100% of the fares. The only thing that they, they, if anything, any costs associated to them receiving those fares is the credit card processing. We have to credit, we have to charge credit card processing because there's a cost associated to it. And in order to streamline it, to make it more convenient for the rider, because two things is important for the rider, lower fares and reliability. They want to know when they get a ride or when they request for a ride that they're going to get one. They want to know how quick they're going to get it because they're antsy. We live in a society where everybody wants everything now, which is understandable. So I can't change how we are as a society, but I could take our company into a level of supplying the demand that's there. And that's really what we're all about, supplying the demand on the rider side and supplying a huge demand on the driver's side. And hopefully through it all, we can uh, make decisions collectively as drivers because we've opened up that platform for the drivers. We've had our first round table meeting. Uh, and when we did that, that's pretty much, uh, we made some changes in the company based on input from drivers. Uh, since they're on the road and they're doing it, and that's really what me and Dawn did from the beginning. I mean, we could have started this thing and just had the app built and rolled it out and never have any type of understanding exactly what a driver goes through but what a rider goes through as well i'm not a big ride share advocate as far as using it uh, my biggest experience is with my son but i do know there's a population that doesn't use it and there's part of the population that does some of the population that relies heavily on it as a part of their life in order to make their lives easier Right, mm -hmm. and we start in, uh, as we open the platform, we start seeing some areas of service that kind of really change things. One of it is with seniors, right? Oh, we yeah. started opening up that, yeah. and main a lot of the stuff that we've done is is because we were brainiacs and we were brainstorming. What we did is went out into the public, not only talked to residents because that's important. I'll give you an example. Before we opened in Yuma. I went out there, when boots on the ground, I went out there, I interviewed drivers, but I interviewed the residents because I want to find two things. I want to find what's the greatest need the residents need as far as uh, rides. What do they need as a transportation company? The second thing is what do the drivers need? And so if we can look at what they need, if there's a high demand of that, then why don't we go ahead and satisfy it? Because that way we enrich their lives, but we enrich also like in Yuma, we do a lot of airport rides. But all that money stays here in Yuma and enriches those lives around there. So what does that do? That that improves, right? Lower fares, right? We we enables us to have lower fares for the residents, and the same token enables us to pay the drivers more money than I've ever made. I mean, and, and just exactly. without trying, uh, and I've driven them for all platforms. But just without trying, you're looking at forty dollars an hour with ride local, and we set it up that way. Uh, the second thing is like uh, uh, when I've uh, driven for like Uber or Lyft, and that's pretty much when I started before we even did all this. I wanted to find out exactly what the drivers were experiencing because of the pay and so on. And so I dove into it and found like disturbing, alarming things as far as percentages. When I started seeing some of the fares that I take, and it's 64%, uh, even when it came to a surge or the prime time, they got more of that money. I've even seen an airport uh, fees that they went ahead and charged the rider, but the driver didn't get anything of it and come to find out there was no fee that went to the airport. So there was just like a lot of shenanigans going uh, to try to create some type of profit stream right. for a company. So right. we looked at that as more being more humanistic, more saying, okay, here, here we have we have a platform. There's a big demand for ride share, right? Mm -hmm. There's a big demand for people to get from A to B. 
why don't we keep it here in the community in the city in which we're we're driving it because if we can do that then that money from the driver stays where here right it goes into the local grocery store it goes into the local gas station right yeah and then also in the services how about the service center how about the plumber how about the hvac guy it keeps the jobs here. that's exactly what it does and it enriches the community and that's really what we're all about, to provide a service that's not only second to none, safe, secure, but also provide it where we can maybe uh, enrich the community, where we can be make a difference as far as how that community grew. Right. And I wanted to tell you, I'm not sure if I told you this, but the other day I uh, got a phone call from a lady and she had asked me if we would take elderly to the hospital. Right. And I said, well, as long as it's not an emergency. And she says, no, she's got a cough and I just can't get her in. So I did. I went and took her, and then I, I took her home, and she was so appreciative. And of course, you know, she's got just a bad cough is all. But I like that service that we were able to provide, that if they uh, somebody right, needs a right, ride, right. we're going to give it to them. Right. We'll figure it out. Right, because we've even been known, we even given free rides out, because if anybody's in desperation, let's say you're just down your luck and you just don't know who to call, call Ride Local, because we, we'll pick you up, we'll get you home we'll get you safe and that's really our intent yeah. Yeah. you know so and we do have that where we take seniors who are uh, on limited income because uh, god uh, god forbid you know you live a whole life you, you struggle the whole life to make ends meet and support a family and so on and then you get to your end and then something befalls you something financially befalls you and then it makes almost like there's a how can I say there's a there's a society of those that type of thing that happens to people, but there's our our people within that that it's a large group of seniors, and right. with it, I mean I've even known it where they didn't have transportation to get back and forth to to a doctor. I, and, I know, and that's why we've opened it up. If you are a, a senior and you are a limited income. Uh, Get a hold of us. Give us a call on our live support, our 24-7 support line. And that's uh, 616-204-0496. Tell us your situation. We'd be glad to send a driver out there and get you to that doctor and get you to that appointment that you have scheduled. And what else is unique about us, too, is if they're usually the um, appointments usually last about an hour. Right. You know, sometimes you can go and do a couple of rides and come back. And then, or if they want to stop at a grocery store, we can wait for them. And what, why we can afford to wait for them is because we have up the minutes on our pricing. So you do get compensated for sitting there waiting for a customer. Yeah, so I really, it's a no brainer. Uh, obviously, you and I uh, driving for Uber or Lyft got us to feel the pinch. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the pinch really happened to us was. Uh, maybe wait for the driver or the rider to come out. Yep. You know, those idle yep. times yep. Or, or the traffic jam or, right. you know, how many times does the driver get somebody, you know, one of your riders says, Hey, can you stop up here? I need to get a pack of gum or whatever they want to buy. And then the nine times out of 10, because of the Uber and Lyft platform, the way it's set up, you generally uh, say, Hey, well, it's not on my stop. I can't do it. So here's what happens. Nine times out of 10, the rider says, hey, I'll give you cash, a big tip. And the driver says, okay, that sounds good. So they'll go and drop them off. And that's how it's transposed. So it's, the money isn't, there isn't no recording of the money. You know I mean, it's not really a kosher platform. Uh, so it's not really a safe platform. And so with that being said, we did that with Ride Local. We said, if I go from here to Amway Grand Plaza downtown, uh, the minutes are there, right? The minutes are calculated right. based on estimation on any trip, right? From GPS, from the Google or yeah. Apple or yeah. whatever. So the minutes are already estimated, but the miles are estimated. So if I pay, uh, when, when, when I take them both together and if I add them all together and when it comes out too, it doesn't matter what I pay per minute other than the difference if I have a traffic jam or I am not being paid for my idle time or the service I want to provide for my provider. Give an example. How many times do you get a, we get riders that want us to help them with their groceries? They don't ask, obviously. They're going to have us pull up. Driver pulls up. Groceries are in the cart. You're thinking the driver thinks, oh, my God, I didn't expect this. We, we set provisions for that. Why? Because there's a high demand for it, number one. All right. There, 
there is a very high demand for it. Uh, there's a lot of people out there, when, especially when it comes to seniors, that really don't get the opportunity to have transportation doing back and forth to work, especially when they're on limited income, but especially when they, they are like, uh, uh, not assisted living, but apartment, senior apartment living. Right. When they're in that type of situation, in some cases, they don't buy food or they don't get a chance to go because it's not convenient, so they don't think of it. And I know it's kind of crazy people not thinking about eating, but have you ever heard the story, uh, grandpa forgot to eat or grandma forgot to eat or this person forgot to eat, and you think, how can somebody forget to eat? As people get older, you do because your metabolism changes, your whole thing changes. So as you get older, eating isn't when you want to eat normally, it's generally because you have to. And that's kind of, I know it's a little different, but that's really what we go through as we get older. When I'm I, at my age now, there's sometimes I crave eating, but I'm telling you, there's a lot of times I don't, and I, there are times I forget to eat. And there are a lot of seniors, and I'm, I'm not, I'm in my 60s, so I'm not, you know, 70s or 80s, but seniors, as they get older, if I'm in my 60s, experience some of it. Imagine when I'm going to experience the 70s and 80s. God forbid for a senior that can't have the ability to get food and, uh, you know, it affected their health. So that's really what we're about. Ride Local is about is providing, uh, providing something for something that needed. There's nobody supplying that. And another thing that we found out too is a lot of, we've opened up like city to city rides, right? Yes. We started that. Yeah. Mainly all these services we provide is because of the request. Um, we've been getting a lot of rides from Detroit back and forth to Detroit. I don't know because we opened there. Is that why we started to get it? But I don't know. But you know, that's kind of neat because we get people that we pick them up from a hotel and then we take them. And now we're getting regular because Fried Local pairs riders and drivers together. And the reason why we do that because if we, we know if we can get a rider and a driver to see each other more often right have more rides Build together right exactly and it'll, they'll feel more safer about it right. and the driver could probably provide a better service knowing the rider a little bit better yep exactly exactly so now we are we got boots on the ground we're taking riders and driver or on uh, in detroit area we do ask for people you know we are in dire need we did do something as far as uh, looking for segments of riders, and we started that out in Grand Rapids here, where we were uh, a lot of our requests for different parts of the city. And as we're becoming requests, uh, everything's about with a rider is the time that they make the request to the amount of time it takes for a driver to pick them up. Right. So really, that's a big gauge. That's how riders really gauge whether they want to go with it or the time limit. So if we can reduce that time limit in the way that we've done it in Grand Rapids, and where we haven't full scaled it obviously at that level, but this is what we're doing is we're going to take drivers within those areas. So if you live in the Northeast area, we want a driver. If you do live there, that's good because we want a driver in there and then gauge it by the amount of drivers we have in those areas, by the amount of requests we're getting in those right. areas. Right. Not saying that you won't be pulled out of those areas sometimes because it's all about making money. If you're in the Northeast area, we get pulled out if you got a Detroit trip. Oh yeah. Right, you're looking at $250, $300 trip. Why wouldn't you, right? Exactly. So that's so at that, that time you would be pulled out of your area, but your primary, primary market would be the community in which you live and of course that's your choice too if you want to take those long that's right or not. that's right well there's a lot of people do how many times the drivers one thing i know a lot of us do is we start from our home base mm -hmm. so if you start from your home base that's where your requests are going to come in from normally now if they don't let's say i was in the let's say i lived in the northeast side and i had a request in the southeast there wasn't someone else that picked it up i had to pick it up now i have to drive all the way from northeast to southeast which is a cost, right? Mm -hmm. So we always talk in a driverpreneur meetings always about two things, right? Really? Right, increasing the sale, increasing the ride fares, and decreasing the cost it takes in order to get it. And there's two ways we found out that we decrease it. By the length of time it takes, how close we can get to the rider of the request, yep. right? If we live in that area, the closer we can get to that. And the other way we could do that as well, Right. And just like you and I were talking, you know, with our goals that we have, and one of them is really important. I would, we both would love to see two to five minute wait time for the customer. 
Right, that's our goal, right? That's what you and I, we went around about, and pretty much we thought that that would be our goal. Yeah. And that's really what, so that's what, that's what we're what we looking to for. do. That's right. what we're striving for, and that's what we're looking to do, and we really hope that you guys will come and help Right, us. and now you don't have to be a driver. You don't have to, we're looking for Uber and Lyft drivers, and the reason being is because there's a lot of Uber and Lyft drivers that are not satisfied on uh, right. the type of money they're making or the platform, and they're looking for something different. And they're sick and tired of being sick and tired. So we opened it up for that. So we encourage Uber and Lyft drivers. Obviously, it's easier, right? You've already had a background check. You've already got the experience. We can give you pointers and stuff that we do with the driver preneur program. But uh, you had a lot of experience. So we encourage Uber and Lyft drivers to join on. The other thing we do is for people that, let's say you just want a little extra money here and there, and you're not sure when you want it. You ever went through life and maybe this month you need a little bit more, but next month you didn't, that type of deal. If that's what you're looking for, it's a great platform to be on. Uh, the cost of started, uh, we should now, we've changed the platform, but since our driver roundtable meeting, uh, we pretty much, our platform is based on uh, the background check of $39.95. That's all the costs is associated to it. There's no sign up fees. There's nothing like that. It's just uh, to cover the background check. Now, one thing nice about it is $39.95. So really, what is our average ride? So our average ride is like 14 or something like that. So, but even at 14, I'm getting a lot. Of, I get a lot of 33 and 20 dollar rides, depending on the rider, obviously where they're coming from. But uh, even if it was at 10 dollars, let's say your average ride was 10 dollars. So okay, it spent me 40 bucks. So I'd have to at least do 40 to break even, right? Do four rides. Why don't I double that and uh, why don't I do eight? And then I double my investment. <laughs> so I mean, if you want to look at it that way, you can too. But we encourage anybody to come on if you're just looking at it. We do have people, what's really kind of neat, is sometimes people, a driver will sign up and then you'll find out what their past is or their background is and you'll realize, that's not a bad idea. We start to get like uh, moms, you know, they have kids at home, taking care of kids, and now they, they just want to make a little extra money. Uh, obviously, they're more daytime drivers than right. anything, which is okay right. because we do need daytime drivers. There's a big market during the day. There's a market that uh, is not any area that's not surge in prime time are big markets. The reason being is because Uber and Lyft drivers aren't satisfying. They aren't. I mean, many, many right, many times like in uh, the slower periods of Uber and Lyft where they're not having the prime time and surging, I get a lot of times that riders will tell me that they can't get it right. Or how about the rider? One thing nice about us, if you can't get a driver, you call our 24-7 live support line, right? The 2040496. And then our dispatch sends a driver out to you. So let's say you got in a situation where you had a ride out to, I don't know, Gun Lake somewhere way out there in the boonies, right? Uh, and then you want to get home, but you can't get a ride driver. That's when you call our, our, our dispatch, we get somebody out there and get you picked up. You can't get that with Uber or Lyft, we know that. But with us, we want to get you home and we want to get you safe. So it's all right. about the service and we talked about that. Now we talked about uh, city to city rides, right? Mm -hmm. They're longer rides, bigger fares, right? Drivers love them. And I mean, don't forget really you guys, you still get 100% of the fares even if you go to Detroit or Chicago or wherever. Right. Right, so it's all about, right, exactly. It's all about you making that 100%. Another thing I wanted to bring up is some of the things that we've done and we've kind of led into the service part of it as far as helping seniors, right? We've yep. talked about that, yep. Yep. but we really haven't talked about the grocery aspect of it. I did talk about, you know, the older seniors having problem getting right. to the store. And I have had families, this, you know, mothers with two or three kids going to the grocery store, you know, it's not only just the elderly, it's, it's Right, or Dollar General or something. Right, right. anywhere. Right. Gas station. Right, right. Bank. Doesn't what's, matter. What's nice is that, and you know, and I guess a rider can kind of weigh the difference between the time mm -hmm. waiting or rescheduling. Rescheduling, you got minimum charge fares, right? Minimum right. fares, so then, then that locks right. in. But if someone was going to go like to Dollar General and they wanted to run in for one or two items, they knew where it was, they knew what they wanted, they could literally have the rider driver's wait, which happens a lot with us. And we wait and they come back out and didn't break their bank. We made extra money by waiting. 
right? And uh, we have already calculated our wait time is in a, right, what is, I think it's $24 an hour. Something at like this that. At this point, yeah. 24, 25. Yeah, so that's what we're really looking for. We're looking for drivers to sign up. Detroit, we got boots on the ground. Things are really uh, rocking and rolling over there. Uh, the East Detroit area has really uh, been really big as far as drivers. We've had some people from Livonia kind of check in. Waterford is another area. Novi, we've had some people come in on the Novi area. So just come on in if you have any questions and you're in the, in over there and you just want to uh, want to know a little bit more about Ride Local, you go to our website at www.ridelocalgr.com. It gives you all the information on there. Uh, go ahead and check on the Become a Driverpreneur tab, and that will give you uh, sign-up information. We have a QR code on there. You go ahead and download your driver app. Uh, and we try to streamline everything, so uh, when you do sign up, it's really about downloading all your documents right. and everything on right. the app. So we need you your driver's license. We need your proof of insurance. And we need pictures of the car. Right, registration. Registration, right. Right, right. right. Yep. And, and also a picture of you, because that rider right. wants to know who's coming to pick them up. They'll be on their driver's license. Yeah, so we secure all that, all right? And then we set up you know, the setup for your inspection. We get your inspection, inspection taken care of, and obviously you gotta do a background check. We do have a, we made it convenient. We do put a tab up on the top, if you look on our website. Mm -hmm. Uh, right next to the become a driverpreneur, there's the background check tab. You can click on that, and it's thirty nine ninety five to complete that. That generally takes three to five days. We do a pretty extensive background check, not only on your background but also on sex registry and also your MVR report for your driving record. So it really doesn't matter if you had one previously. Let's say you started with Uber two months ago. You still come with us. You still have to do a full-fledged background check. That way our records are secure and we're compliant by state regulations. Uh, we encourage you to sign up. We encourage you to come to us. Uh, one thing I wanted to bring up is, Dawn, if you could talk maybe a little bit about, uh, because this is a big deal, the influencing program, not only is for the drivers, but really anybody. Right. And what it is, it's $200 cold cash if any driver in, uh, invites a driver to come and join us. Um, obviously, they have to what, drive for 30 days or 90 days or what. And then after that, then if you want the $200, you can have it. Otherwise, you can just keep building it right there in the bank. Right. Um, same with the riders. If you get a rider, it's $5. Um, and if, you know, it just keeps going. And the more, the more drivers you get and the more... Uh, riders you get, obviously, that's just more money in your pocket. That's so the way cheap. someone can make money. The nice right. thing about it is you don't even have to be a rider or a driver. Right. It's nice to know what you're referring to other people. So, but it is possible for you to go ahead and uh, refer uh, as an influencer. Uh, the easiest way to do it is download the rider app and then in, in the promo section, there'll be uh, uh, where you can share it, you know, like with friends and stuff. Mm -hmm. So on uh, the writer side of it, you would that 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 would literally uh, give you five dollars every right. referral. Exactly. You wouldn't have to do anything but just share it. They use right. it. Once they use it, it activates you to get the five dollars. Right? You get that cold cash or rewards. Uh, the other one on the driver, we've done it where you, you can take your first name, last four digits of your phone number, and that's that's your invite code. So you'd use that as an invite code to drive to drivers. And then when they when they sign up, tell them to fill out the form on uh, become a driverpreneur tab on our website. Now our website is www.ridelocalgr.com, and I know I've said that probably three times, but I'll probably say it again. But anyhow, if if you like what you're seeing here, I, I we ask you to subscribe. Now it does two things for us. It not only lets us know that you like the content and that we're going in the right direction, but it also lets other people know that the content's valuable and it could be valuable for them as well. So if it's not for you, for others as well. The other thing you can do is you can click on the notification bell. And what does that do? As soon as we do come up with a new video and we're rolling out, I mean, right now I'm rolling out, I don't know, I think three, four, five videos a week. I really try not to count. Uh, as I think of content or something comes up, right, right, right. then we decide to come out with a video. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you want to hit the notification bell, and that way you'll be alerted of any video that yep. does come up. Uh, if there's something you'd like to see, let us know that too. 
because we also like to show that. We do have plans in the future. Now Detroit's open and we're going ahead and spearheaded that. We do have plans in the future uh, by going out boots on the ground to cities that we are not servicing. Now let me repeat that. Kind of crazy, right? We're a company that's going to go to cities that we are not servicing. And the reason why is because we are, I believe the best way to do it is let people know about you. How do you know about them? Become amongst them, right? If I can go down to a city and I can talk to residents, maybe there's something within that city because all cities are different. So every city has that little pain point. You follow me? Now, so I mean, now, Uber and Lyft, they can't do this. Why? Because they don't get out of the executive office to get in the ground. Right. right? <laughs> but I'm willing, and you're willing yeah, to do this. So oh, let me fly out. We are, we are setting this all up. <laughs> we're going to be city to city flights. But uh, that's really to talk to the residents of that city and find out what the issues are, uh, what kind of things they're experiencing. And maybe uh, by talking to them, maybe we'll find that pain point for that city that can enrich that city and change things for them. So really, that's really what we're all about. Uh, if you have any comments or suggestions, feel free to you know reach out to us, let us know. Don, uh, the only thing, I think the only thing I want to end it with is just to encourage people. Well, first I want to thank everybody that supported us from the beginning. Yeah, uh, most definitely. Not only have uh, we got drivers, we got writers, you know, because every time a writer uses us, obviously they're supporting us. Mm -hmm. Right, but the main thing about it is we literally have writers that we met initially from this platform, right? From the ride share, right. we have writers and literally has contributed money to our company and our cause. Yeah. To me, that's a huge thing, and that's that's something a lot bigger than us and a lot higher than us. So with that, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that we do thank everything because everything is encouraged by our higher power, right? And with that. We'll see you at the top. Have a good night. Have a good night.